So when we, from DNV side, look at the development in Asia Pacific, we are seeing some uh, very interesting uh, developments across the region. Uh, and of course, it varies a lot between where each country is approaching towards the energy transition. Everyone is basically facing the same challenge. It is obviously how to scale the energy transition and at the same time reduce the emissions and of course also secure, secure it in a way that it's affordable and also that it ensures uh, energy uh, security. The interesting thing for us is of course how can we help each country navigate this very complex uh, challenge uh, and it's actually not just in Asia Pacific we see similar challenges across the world. There is one overriding theme, and that is the electrification uh, of uh, societies. We are seeing that everything is becoming increasingly electrified. And the fastest and cheapest way to electrify and, and scale the electrification of societies is uh, through renewables, whether it's wind and solar uh, as the two main drivers, thinking. This means, for instance, how are we going to make sure we have the right grid uh, and the future grid? How do we ensure that we have the right battery storage or other storage facilities? And what role can the direct electrification actually carry forward with us? In a small country like Denmark, is more than 40% of the uh, total energy demand uh, is being uh, covered uh, by wind. And wind is therefore a very important driver for this. Sometimes the wind doesn't blow. So how do you then create the buffer? So in Denmark, for instance, we are going to import uh, hydrogen uh, from Norway uh, or can be from Sweden. So when the wind doesn't blow, we can tap into them. When we have a lot of wind in Denmark, we can send it back uh, to Norway uh, so they can keep their uh, reserves. The real way to solve these challenges, what we have seen is how to think integration, system thinking, and also collaboration sometimes across borders. And we have seen that. And we have also seen that in some countries where there have been some challenges with the outage that people have asked, is this caused, for instance, by the, the of the renewables? But what we can see. Without uh, transmission, there will be no energy transition. So for us, the grid is the unsung hero of the energy transition. The grid is the enabler and the one who's going to transport all the electrons around in the country. And we know that especially also in a much more digitalized world, for instance, through AI and major data centers, that the need for electrification uh, and the need for transport of electrons is growing very rapidly. So again, long-term th uh, long thinking, long-term planning, and using all the tools available is the, uh, is the success here. And many countries, I would like to say, is challenged by having underinvested in the grid for many, many years. But the good news is it can definitely be solved uh, and we know how to solve it. When you make investments into renewables, you pay a lot of money upfront. And when you pay a lot of money upfront, you need to get them back later on. So the long-term visibility of the rules and regulations that you are investing into are very important for the investors in order for them to make the commitment and make the investments that are needed. Electrification of societies is a huge trend and is a trend that all societies need to relate to because everything is getting more electrified. Just if we look into the transport sector, on the other hand, we also have to recognize that there are some sectors which we cannot directly electrify. So for instance, heavy duty industry, there we need to look at it differently and say, okay, should we use hydrogen? For the very important thing here is that we have to think in a portfolio and that the portfolio, for instance, for wind and solar, and then for the hard to electrify sectors, we need to do something else.
So on the policies uh, to really make sure that grid uh, and, the, and the speed of the whole transition happens is all about giving long-term visibility to uh, the investors. People recognize that these are well-functioning part of the energy infrastructure. But in order for them to have visibility to invest on a longer term scale, they need long term visibility in the planning uh, and the way that governments are committing long term. The key really to scale fast here is to have some very clear commitments that, for instance, every year we will install three gigawatts of wind or solar every year and the following year the same. That if you make the investments into renewables, of course, if the grid doesn't follow, then you will not be able to use it. So there also at the same time needs to be a very firm commitment, like for instance in Korea together with KEPCO, on how are we going to make the grid build out in order to satisfy these needs. Electricity produced uh, in Korea, like wind or solar uh, or others, is one way to ensure both that it is cheap but also that it is domestically made and is something that uh, Korea as a country can control yourself. When I compare Korea and Japan, uh, are both, for instance, two countries that are really trying to be front runners what is floating offshore wind. And normally when we talk about offshore wind, we talk about offshore wind which stands uh, on the seabed. But when you think about it in the world, 70% of the world is actually covered by the ocean. And it's actually only very few places in the world where you can attach uh, the offshore wind turbines to the sea bottom because the water is simply too deep. So now both Korea and Norway are really looking into trying out how to make floating offshore wind. And you can imagine that if you, from a technology point of view, really find a way to solve it with floating offshore wind, it opens up fantastic opportunities for Korea, but it also opens up fantastic export opportunities for Korean companies. The best way to do it is first to do it well at home, and once you do it well at home, then you can start to export it. And I think that is, for instance, between a very exciting opportunity for collaboration here between Norway and Korea on how to scale floating offshore wind 